And a good Friday early afternoon to you, Roger Hill of Weathering Heights. This weather video is driven by 802cars.com, representing 802 Toyota, Twin City, Subaru, and 802 Honda, all located off of Exit 7 on Interstate 89. Big picture, looking at the U.S. as a whole, uh, southern parts of Canada, and uh, what stands out, of course, is the main feature with some gusty winds rolling through. Uh, most of the strongest winds are in a kind of a line from the uh, Central Great Lakes, and then uh, headed southeast bound through parts of New York State. Some of the strongest winds right now are in parts of Virginia, Pennsylvania, and working their way toward New York City. These strong gusty winds will be working their way into the Mohawk Valley and affect the Southern Green Mountains later on this afternoon. Uh, well, a little bit later uh, this afternoon, they should be really starting to ramp up as this whole process will begin to shift a little bit further to the north. Uh, also, we're looking at just a little bit of snow, kind of indicated here. This is some jet stream energy on the back side of this area of low pressure. Pressure gradient much stronger, of course the winds, but it's also going to deliver that slightly colder air aloft. And that slightly colder air aloft is going to time out tonight with uh, a little bit of wet snow in our upper terrain, maybe down to some valley floors in terms of grassy surfaces. Not really anticipating a huge travel issue with this. I think roads will stay bare and wet. Overnight lows will be somewhere around 32 to 35. So it's a close call just off the valley floors. But needless to say, a little bit of wet snow yet again. And this will, of course, go into technically May 1st, May Day. Temperature setup, as you can see, some much colder air getting sort of... Uh, picked off by that uh, reservoir of cold air that's up in Canada and this is going to continue to track on through. Let's take a look at the incremental models using the European. So this is valid at 12 noon on this Friday and the main area of precipitation has now shifted a little bit north, uh, just north of the Canadian border, kind of south of uh, Sherbrooke, Quebec or that particular vicinity. Here's our surface low. Strong pressure gradient here, especially across this region, and this is what's going to be diving south. So as I run the computer models hour by hour at this point, this is valid at about uh, 5 o'clock this evening. And as we get into the evening hours, it'll be cold enough aloft where, again, we're going to see a little bit of that wet snow. The strongest winds will be basically this afternoon and into a portion of this evening, and then the winds ramp down as we get into the overnight period uh, below thresholds. But you can see there's some fairly good uh, pressure gradient right across the region into uh, 07Z, 08Z. 9Z is about uh, 5 o'clock in the morning. That's 10, 11, 12Z. That would be 8 o'clock in the after, uh, 8 o'clock in the morning rather. And then we see that precipitation begin to get pushed out by this expansion of this ridge of higher pressure. That's going to be pushing on through. And we wait the next weather system. Now we're looking at a pretty good day on Saturday. It's kind of a tight squeeze. The exiting precipitation heads on out. We get into a little bit of sunshine. It will still be a little bit on the blustery side, but not too bad. And a, a relatively cold day for this time of year on the first day of May. Once we get into Saturday night, we have this weak disturbance here that's kind of riding this sort of baroclinic zone out of Canada, almost like a clipper-like system. And it produces a little bit of precipitation into the morning hours. You note that it's relatively small. A little secondary low tries to form and gets pushed on out. So we are looking at good weather on Sunday as well. And temperatures across southern parts of Vermont, as you can see this, uh, the uh, zero degree isotherms and the setup here for temperatures starts to push in. It gets a little bit warmer as we get into the afternoon hours once we get into Sunday. Next weather system is uh, kind of a little bits and pieces here. It's going to kind of string along, along a kind of an old frontal boundary. And we'll keep an eye on this system here, but it's a rather wet system, uh, a wet period as we continue right into uh, the about Wednesday this week and even beyond that point. This is valid on Monday. You can see how that works here. This is based on the 06Z model. We're going to switch that to the 00Z. So moving that right along, this is uh, valid into uh, Monday night and then into Tuesday. That system moves on by. We get into, uh, it looks like Tuesday night, still another shot of precipitation. Looks like a little heavier and uh, rolling right through parts of Vermont, valid on uh, Wednesday. And this may also include a few thunderstorms that may be able to make it into southern parts of Vermont by the time we hit Wednesday afternoon. Now beyond the period, you can see it's kind of an expansion here of a secondary low trying to form on the sort of caboose end of that frontal system. It then gets pushed on out on Thursday, so still wet weather into the morning hours on Thursday. 
we do dry out finally beyond that point and then we're looking at another storm system trying to gather strength and then work its way up north and here we go again and this is valid uh, going into next weekend on the 9th of May. This is the weather pattern showing precipitation, the three hourly QPF. And you can see the bulk of which is really happening in the front part of uh, the system. Then we kind of dry out a little bit over the weekend and then some upticks here. What does it all mean? Oh, well, it's a fairly decent amount of precip. Uh, I really haven't accrued this much according to the European model I've seen since uh, really the start of 2021. So total amounts of uh, uh, quantitative precipitation accumulated is over two inches from this period on. How about that? Seven-day precipitation for the uh, from the Weather Prediction Center shows uh, kind of similar conditions, maybe just a bit less than what the European is showing, but still pretty healthy amounts, a little bit more terrain-induced here. Quick look at temperatures of the Climate Reanalyzer. You can see that we have some colder air all the way from Alaska, kind of southeast bound and into the northeast and Great Lakes. GFS Ensemble looks like this, so uh, temperatures... For the most part, on the average, is staying below 60 degrees. Occasionally, we we hit we go above it. Not very often, though. And uh, quick check on dew point temperatures. Look like that. 850 hectopascal temperatures about the top of Mount Mansfield. That particular slice, cold enough for a little bit of snow. And indeed, we are going to see a little bit of snow tonight. We warm back up. It looks like toward the middle part and end of the week. And then we cool back down and kind of marginal there from that point on. The moss uh, output uh, maximum temperatures for the next five days look like that. And then three days later, looks like this. So a little bit of a warming trend trying to creep up the coast. Not a whole lot, though. Roger Hill, Weathering Heights. Thanks for watching.